Darren, this rivalry goes back to before even women's college basketball was a sanctioned NCAA sport. They have played more than 100 times between these two teams as we are underway. Middle wins the tip. Starting five on the floor for Rick Ensel, Courtney Blakely, Anastasia Boldareva, Savannah Wheeler, Jalen Gregory, and Courtney Whitson. And Boldareva will go to the line for her first free throw attempts on the night. Starting five for the Golden Eagles, Jordan Brock, Anna Walker, Reagan Hurst, Jada Gwynn, and Reagan Grimes. As that first foul will go against Anna Walker. You know, you talk about how these teams have played since before NCAA sanctioned women's basketball. That just speaks to the rich history that Tennessee has for their women's sports and their girls' sports and the fact that the these colleges have played back in, in for so long ago. I mean, it's unbelievable for people that aren't from the state of Tennessee when they come here to understand just how deep those roots run. And Tech breaks the press. And Anna Walker has the first field goal on the night. The junior from Cleveland, Tennessee, the transfer from Chattanooga. And Blakely shuffled her feet. And that's the first turnover on the night. That's a good sign for Coach Roseman and the Eagles to be able to break that pressure. Middle just wants to provide some token pressure. They don't necessarily want to aggressively trap. They want them to just kind of run some clock. If they get a steal, great, but otherwise make them set up and run their half-court offense. A wide open look and Jordan Brock burying the three. And Tech has made middle pay for putting on the pressure early as they have beaten the press on their first two possessions. And when you can beat the press and kick it out for a wide open three-point look like that, that's demoralizing for the team that's pressing. We said it, Tennessee Tech can shoot the three. They shoot it very well. Wild shot cleared by Tech. Now Hurst drive and kick. And Brock caught it with her heels out of bounds. Tonight's officials, Brian Hall, Trey Miles, and Keisha Brown, a veteran crew, calling balls and strikes, blowing the whistles here tonight, or today, I should say, this morning. And a foul on the drive. Gonna be the second team foul against the Golden Eagles and the first against Reagan Hurst. Tennessee Tech three and two coming into this matchup against Middle Tennessee, picked to be first in the Ohio Valley Conference preseason coaches poll. Came out middle of October, so high expectations for Kim Roseman's squad here this season as Jalen Gregory is gonna be fouled on the three-point attempt and Jada Gwynn not too sure about the call, but it's going against her either way. Yeah, got to give the shooter an opportunity to come down and land. Tennessee Tech did not, and the, the cardinal sin, you never want to foul a jump shooter. You teach it, you say it all the time. The only thing worse than fouling a jump shooter is fouling a jump shooter shooting three free throws, shooting a three-point shot, which Jalen Gregory gets to shoot. Jalen Gregory, the sophomore from Lafayette, Tennessee, product of Macon County High School. Coach up there, Macon County does an amazing job. Been there a long time. And Jalen Gregory stays perfect from the free throw strike this season. Now 17 of 17 on free throws this year. That's pretty efficient there. Again, my math a little off sometimes, but 17 out of 17, not bad. That's perfection, Jake. That's more than efficient. We're, we're perfection right now with Jalen Gregory from the foul line. Tough shot in the paint. And cleared by Courtney Whitson. Ball pressure on the perimeter made that pass a little difficult to handle. Still, Walker did a nice job coming down with it, just couldn't get it to go. Good defense by the Lady Raiders, that possession. Down the shot clock for middle. 
Tennessee Tech's plan to squeeze every on ball. They don't want the bigs for middle to get a free run to the rim. So you can see that every time there's an on ball so far, Tennessee Tech really bodying up, squeezing them, and they're going under that pick. Look for Wheeler or Blakely to maybe pop a three-point shot there if they continue to do that. So that's going to be the second foul against Anna Walker, and she is the second leading scorer for this Golden Eagles squad with Malia Owens, the leading scorer, out sick today. And she's going to sit with two fouls already here in the first quarter, not even halfway through. As Savannah Wheeler, Marshall's all-time leading free throw shooter, rolls home the first here today. Coach Roseman has to sit Walker. Two fouls this early in the basketball game. You can't afford to have her get her third in the first half. Tennessee Tech is deep. They play a lot of players. So from a, a rotation standpoint, it doesn't necessarily hurt them. But from a scoring standpoint, they've got to find some offense now with Walker on the bench. And there's some youth on that Golden Eagles bench. Three freshmen coming off the pine as Malashka, who checked in a minute ago, picks up her first foul and the first for Middle Tennessee this morning. Malashka had good defense there. She went up and tried to make an effort on blocking that shot. I think if she just stood there and had her palms to the ceiling, make it difficult for Grimes to score over her. Officials thought she must have got some arm there with that block shot. Reagan Grimes, the Nashville product from Ravenwood High School, one of those new freshman faces in the lineup for Kim Roseman, knocks down both free throws over the roars of all the students here this morning. They didn't give these kids coffee, did they? I don't know if they did or not, but this would be a great promotion for earplug giveaway. <laughs> for all the fans that, that needed earplugs today to come in, uh, because these kids are absolutely it's, it's shattering decibels right now. It's, it's loud and it's fun, and I love it. That's what they need to do. Brock probing, looking for help. Now Hurst. Eight on the shot clock for Tech. Gwynn through two Blue Raiders. Hit every part, but the part that mattered on that one just rimmed it out. Now Wheeler in transition, taking it right to the rack and drawing a foul. It's a great decision, Savannah Wheeler. Rule number one defensively is you need to stop the ball in transition. Because Middle's got some three-point shooters that can run to the perimeter, Tennessee Tech was kind of in no man's land there, and, and Savannah just dribbled until they stopped her. That, unfortunately, they, for Tennessee Tech, didn't stop her until she got all the way to the rim. Nice job, Savannah Wheeler. Get that foul called, and Tennessee Tech already five team fouls, not even at the halfway mark of the first quarter. And now two starters for the Golden Eagles will have to take a seat as Reagan Hurst picks up her second foul as well as Savannah Wheeler knocks down another free throw. We talk about Middle Tennessee shooting a lot of threes. They're also very capable of getting to the rim. And when they can do that and play downhill, it puts such pressure on Tennessee Tech to defend them without fouling. All nine of Middle Tennessee's points here in the first quarter have come from the free throw line. They are nine of nine from the stripe here early. Three off the dribble from Brock. Oh, net. The Cole Country sharpshooter from Harlan, Kentucky, Jordan Brock. Jordan Brock saw Savannah Wheeler just start to go under that ball screen just enough. Great anticipation by Jordan Brock and a great shot. One of Harlan High School's all-time leading scores. As Whitson scores the first field goal of the morning for Middle Tennessee. And Courtney Blakely did a nice job feeding the post there. She had her eyes on Whitson the whole time. Important to get Whitson started down on the block, get her feeling good about everything before she gets out there on those pop shots for three. Just the second field goal attempt in the first quarter as the call is going against Tennessee Tech. Kira Hill shuffling her feet. Transfer from Walter State Community College. They go right back to Whitson, who will draw the foul against Peyton Carter, who just checked in. And Peyton Carter checked in. She actually was guarding Blakely 
and Tennessee Tech went to a switch on that handoff between Blakely and Whitson. And when that happened, obviously, they had a smaller kid on Courtney Whitson. Courtney Whitson did a nice job getting her right down in the post. And again, Blakely did a nice job finding her. Halfway through the first, middle on top by a point. And Darren Middle doing a great job of attacking the bucket, getting Tennessee Tech on their heels. But Tennessee Tech, in turn, is doing a really nice job handling Middle Tennessee's defensive pressure. They are both teams so far playing at a nice level. Obviously, each of them have played five games now. So it's not that early season trying to get the rust off, so to speak. Although Tennessee Tech hadn't played since the 20th of November. So I was curious to see how that was going to affect them. But so far, so good. They're handling the pressure, and they're making open shots. And if you can continue to do that, that really helps take some pressure off your offense. Jordan Brock, the graduate, has knocked down a couple of threes for Tennessee Tech. Playing without Malia Owens, their leading scorer. Middle playing without Alexis Whittington as that foul is going against Jalen Gregory, just the second team foul against Middle Tennessee. And Gregory's first. And Savannah Wheeler will check back in. Middle Tennessee okay with that. Their identity is to pressure the ball. They want to make it difficult to see passing lanes. They want to try to get up, deny outside the three-point line, push Tennessee Tech's offense out past the perimeter, make it difficult for them to hit deep three-point shots instead of just toes to three three-point shots. Brock pull up mid-range jumper. That one is short. As Tamia Scott, the freshman from Clarksville, Tennessee, has checked in for the Blue Raiders. And turns it over. Good post defense by Kira Hill. On that handoff, Kira Hill did not switch out to the guard so she could stay in there and guard the bigger Malashka. Carter with a rebound and up and in. And Tamia Scott got caught there with her hands down. Rebounding position. Turned to look for the ball, but didn't have her hands up to secure that rebound. First pinch points on the night from either team comes from Peyton Carter, a junior from Abingdon, Virginia. It's Malashka double team. Kicks it out to a wide open Courtney Whitson. Great job, Ksenia Malaska noticed the double team as she turned baseline shoulder, and it came from Whitson's player. Whitson did a nice job on the flash of just rotating behind Malaska to make it a really nice passing angle for Ksenia and Courtney Whitson with a big three-point shot. Brock, another three. When Tennessee Tech is not pressured, when they can be deliberate and patient in their offense, they're getting wide open looks right now. And another wide open look, this one for the lefty Carter. This one is short as Savannah Wheeler hits the deck hard. Savannah Wheeler got up there showing some hops that you don't normally see from the guard. A foul going against the Golden Eagles as Blakely and Bull Dereva will check in. And the other side of the floor, shoot a couple of free throws as Middle Tennessee is in the bonus. Foul going against Grimes, her first. And Wheeler knocks down another free throw. Wheeler, 90%. Right. Just continuing comfortable in this offense. And a steal off the inbounds pass. Courtney Blakely. The luxury of two point guards on the floor. Savannah Wheeler can drop back and play that middle line in that press defense. Courtney Blakely does a nice job pressuring the ball. Tough take from Blakely, but too hard off the glass. Here comes Brock in transition. Pull up mid-range jumper, and the shooter's roll falls for Reagan Grimes, her first field goal tonight. And the lead is back to one for Middle Tennessee. Kiara Hill really being physical down against Boldereva. First on the squeeze on the screen, and then now down on the, on the block. Loose ball knocked out of bounds. 
officials conferring. And it's Tech Ball. Kayla Cowart, the freshman from Gainesville, Georgia, checking in for her first action. Mentioned there's a lot of new faces on this Tech squad after losing two of their leading scorers from last year, including the Middle Tennessee transfer, Anna Jones. This is still a team that was picked to be the tops in the Ohio Valley after finishing second last year. And a nice drop and a nice finish at the rim by Kira Hill. Yeah, Boulder Reva came over to help on the drive, and that's Jalen Gregory's rotation to get back and try to prevent that pass. Too easy that time. And Tech has their first lead of the morning, as that's going to be an offensive foul going against Savannah Wheeler. Third team foul against Middle. And this Texas, it's Texas, goodness gracious. I keep calling them Texas. Tennessee Tech. Looking at Middle Tennessee's schedule, they played Texas Tech last week in Vegas. Should have beat them. Had them on the ropes, did a nice job out there in Las Vegas, and just the lid on the basket there in that fourth quarter. But a good tournament, great event for them to go into and, and have a chance to play a team like Texas Tech at a neutral site there. And then, of course, they bounce back with the big win over Missouri State uh, the next day. One of several high-profile non-conference games that Middle Tennessee has scheduled this year. Arguably the biggest one of the year coming up on Sunday against Louisville. Hey, and we think it's House. yeah, we think it's loud here now with these kids. It's going to be loud on Sunday. Um, heard rumblings, 8,500 tickets already sold. It's going to be a big crowd for a nationally ranked program. Coach Jeff Walls, uh, know him very well. He does a great job, and uh, I give him a lot of credit for bringing this team, his team, down here into arguably what's going to be a real tough environment. So. If you don't have your ticket yet, you live here in the Middle Tennessee area, make sure you get one. The Ville coming to the borough. A nice high-low action as Boldareva can't finish the pass from Whitson. As we are less than a minute remaining here in the first quarter, Tennessee Tech shorthanded without their leading score, but playing fearlessly, leading by one here on the road. Doing a nice job handling the pressure by Middle Tennessee and making open shots and getting some easy looks. At three off the mark from, from Walker. If you'd have told Kim Roseman and Tennessee Tech you could have 19 points in the first quarter and have the lead on Middle Tennessee, she'd take it without even playing this quarter. They've done a nice job so far. Coward all over Jalen Gregory. It'll go high-low again. This time it's off the hands of Boldareva. Middle struggling to take advantage of their size. Those wing feeds are, are tough, that angle to the to the law pass like that. A lot of times coaches will have you throw one more up into the funnel and then have the post down low spin and seal. To, it just seems like it gets a, a better angle sometimes. It was a it was a good throw. Just those are tough for Boulder Raven and, and any big to come down with sometimes. Five seconds left in the quarter. Gwynn driving, now kicking it out to Walker for three, just off the mark at the buzzer. But the Golden Eagles of Tennessee Tech have come into the borough and put Middle Tennessee on notice. They lead by one, heading into the second quarter. Stay with us on ESPN Plus. It's gonna blow its roof. The glass might shatter. Yeah, they're gonna have to pause that. They can't play music <laughs> during the action, but I bet we're gonna hear that at halftime. That's that's definitely one that you'll wanna bounce back on. Tennessee Tech doing a nice job. Middle Tennessee yet to have an offensive rebound, not because they've missed a lot of shots. They've just gotten to the free throw line so much in that first quarter. Middle 13 of 13 from the stripe in the first quarter, but defensively for Tennessee Tech, they've forced six, now seven turnovers against Middle Tennessee. That was the high-low look I like. Whitson just, Tennessee Tech did a nice job of getting kind of topside to a three-quarter, and Whitson either has to hold that position more, and, and I'd like to see her just try to bury that Tennessee Tech player on the baseline, but uh, Tech did a nice job getting up top in Boulder Raven. That just was a, a tough pass for her to throw and Whitson to handle. There's an entry pass and then a rejection by Boulder Raven on Kiara Hill. Middle looking to go. Screen. 
Gregory drive and kick. They go around the horn. Blakely lines up a three and knocks it down. What a great extra pass by Savannah Wheeler. I thought Gregory probably had the layup because Tennessee Tech didn't come over to rotate. She'd made the nice draw and kick to Wheeler. Wheeler trusted her teammate, made that extra pass, and that's a big shot for Courtney Blakely. Second three on the afternoon for middle as Blakely gets the seal and goes the other way. And that's what two point guards can give you. Again, so impressed with Courtney Finn. She does a nice job pressuring point guards. She's still streaky from three, I think would be the word a, a, a scout would use for her. She's capable of making it, been a bit inconsistent. So they'll see. It only taken six to three of them. Really worked hard in the season on tight shot and becoming more of a threat on the perimeter to play against those offense. He likes kids that can shoot the three. Reagan Hurst missing the runner on the other end for Tennessee Tech. And Malashka goes up and draws the foul. That was a nice decision. Blakely caught it right when Malashka turned and faced, and there was no hesitation. She was able to get it before that window could close and Tennessee Tech could get top side more, and also before the rotation could come from the backside. Malashka with a decisive move and nice finish to the rim, gets rewarded with another two free throws. First points for Malashka. As she knocks down both free throws. Second leading scorer for Middle Tennessee this season. 14 and a half points, five and a half rebounds. And Middle taking what Tennessee Tech's giving them and making a living right now so far in this part of the game, this beginning part of the game. 15 for 15 now from the foul line. Another three going up from Carter. This one is off to the left. Alaska between two Golden Eagles. Showing her maturity as a point guard, she had to slip. She had the ball in her hand, and, and she saw that the middle of the paint was open and gave Malashka the point, saying, hey, go to the rim, I'll get you. And that was a really nice pass and a nice finish. And Whitson knocked down Carter. No foul call, but the possession will stay with Tennessee Tech. And I'm not sure how that wasn't a foul. It looked like Courtney Whitson lowered her shoulder. But it's still Tech ball. Kim Roseman, Roseman is trying to get an answer as well. Tennessee ne Tech needs a basket here. As a 9-0 run for the Raiders, Tennessee Tech yet to score here in the second quarter. Brock finally off the mark from deep. That's been their best offense. Here in the early goings of this one is her jump shot, and she is hunting around that three-point line. Gregory from deep off the mark. I think Gregory was surprised how wide open she was. And then getting the steal on the other end as that's going to be a jump ball, and it'll stay with Tennessee Tech. Middle Tennessee, you're starting to see getting more active defensively, getting their hands on some loose balls. And again, Tennessee Tech out of their rhythm offensively right now. We talked about when they when they can run their stuff and be patient, they've gotten some good looks so far in this game. They're, they're sped up a little right now. Jake seems like they're playing a little rushed. That's making it difficult for them to run their offense, and that's due to Middle Tennessee's defense. Courtney Whitson going to be called for the hand check. That's going to be her first, and the first against middle here in the second quarter. It'll now on top by eight, their largest lead. Walker in the post, nice finish. Second bucket tonight for Anna Walker. She used the back down dribble nice to set up, coming back to her baseline shoulder there, and that was a good strong move for Anna Walker. 11 points per game for Walker. Tech roster as Velasca fighting through the contact of Walker. 
That was close to Walker picking up a foul as she went yeah. for that block on Malaska, but credit Cassini Malaska. She knows Anna Walker's got two personal fouls. If there's a chance that she can take her off the baseline and try to drive to the rim, she's gonna take it. Wide open three, lined up and knocked down by Reagan Hurst, her first long ball tonight and the fourth for the Golden Eagles. So Malashka has scored six straight for Middle Tennessee. She seems to get all of her points in bunches as Blakely going right back to her. Wheeler probing, going up with the left hand. Nice finish. That's what we saw Savannah Wheeler do at Marshall in her tenure there. And as she's getting more comfortable with Middle Tennessee's offense, she's starting to see those opportunities. She's very good going, creating a shot for herself. Eight points for Wheeler, but that's her first field goal this morning. It's Brock's in trouble. Now Walker will put up a three. That caroms off the front of the rim. And Middle will get possession. You see Kim Roseman telling her shooters, take your time, plant your feet, get set. Yeah, she rushed it. She's telling her, you rushed it. If you've got a rush to get a shot off, then there's probably a pass you can make yourself a shot scoring opportunity. Blakely on a nice finish from Gary in the end. Tennessee Tech is still squeezing the ball screen. You saw Jones or Anna Walker up there squeezing that ball screen and Courtney Blakely just getting to the rim, turning the corner hard. Blakely now is seven, matching her season average as Brock is going to pull it up off the dribble, this one off the iron, but rebounded by Gwynn. This is a foul against Middle Tennessee on the drive going against Jalen Gregory. It's going to be her second. And the third team foul against Middle. As Reagan Grimes will check back in for Anna Walker. And Tech has a fresh 20 seconds on the shot clock. Brock trying to direct traffic from the wing but also trying to stay out of a trap. Great defense from Courtney Blakely. Middle Tennessee's plan to defend ball screens is to ice them and try to make them go away, make Tennessee Tech go away from the ball screen. Blakely doing a good job right there. Carter got the rebound, but missed it with the left hand. Tech getting looks, but as you said, and as Kim Roseman was telling her team, relax, take your time. Rushing shots. Nope. As that is an errant pass, bad angle from Courtney Woodson trying to find Malashka, and that's exactly what Rick Insel's telling her right now. Yeah, that right there, that's that's a tough lob because you're going across the lane like that. And what head coach Rick Insel was saying is you gotta have a little more arc there. You just can't throw a frozen rope across the lane like that. You've got to try to drop it in over over top of the Tennessee Tech defender. Ten on the shot clock, Peyton Carter. Now Hurst from the wing, the three is short. Eagles now four of 12 from deep after starting three of three. And again, just rushing their shots just a little bit. But they are still in this ball game, trailing by nine after leading by one at the end of the first quarter as Malashka going to work against Hurst and gets it to roll home. Ksenia Malashka one-on-one against any Tennessee def Tech defender today is going to be advantage Middle Tennessee. Tennessee Tech's going to have to bring some help or Lady Raiders will just keep throwing it inside to Malashka. Blakely with the body bump against Brock on the drive. Give her a little forearm. That's going to be the first against Blakely. As Middle's lead is now into double digits. Lead by 11. Middle Tennessee a plus 17.8 scoring margin so far this season. At Leeds Conference USA, it's 39th in the country. So Middle Tennessee's got spurtability. They're explosive. 
Tennessee Tech doesn't want to get into a scoring match with Middle Tennessee today. They want to keep this game in the 50s or low 60s. If it gets in the 70s, it's, it's Middle Tennessee's advantage. And Blakely going to pick up another foul. Just seconds after picking up her first. So now Middle has 14 fouls. And Jalen Gregory will check back in with her two fouls. Carter against the freshman, Scott. Now picking up her dribble in trouble. Looking for help. It turns it over. And Courtney Woodson wisely backs it out of a three on one. And Wheeler will take over with 23 on the shot clock. Tech now switching the ball screens. And Whitson gets it to go with the right hand. Really nice drive, Courtney Whitson. Off of that switch on the ball screens, Tennessee right now critical to their advantage, to the reason they've got a 13-point lead. Well, I can tell you at the end of the first quarter, they had zero points in the paint compared to eight <laughs> against Tennessee Tech. Uh, I'm willing to bet those numbers are a little bit more evenly matched once we get another look at the stats. 14 to 10, Middle Tennessee leads in that category right now. Quinn going against the smaller Wheeler. And Tech can't buy a bucket right now. 0 for their last six as their scoring drought has gone on for more than four minutes of game time. And we talk about the fact that Malia Owens isn't playing for Tennessee Tech today, but they've still got very good options. Middle Tennessee, these last five minutes defensively, has really turned up the pressure. That possession was a great example. All five were locked in, defending, keeping the ball out of the paint, limiting them to one shot, and then Savannah Wheeler did a nice job turning and put a body on her to get the rebound. Yeah, even without Malia Owens playing, they still have at least five other players that average at least seven and a half points per contest. There's one minute remaining here in the second quarter. Wheeler looking for Boldareva back door and a nice finish. What a find by Savannah Wheeler. And for a post player, Anastasia Boldareva, to cut to the rim like that, so often you, you talk to players when they pick up their dribble, their teammates run to the basketball. Boldareva ran to the rim and Wheeler found her. That was a great pass. Third assist on the night for Wheeler. Drive and kick, Cowan wide open three, and she buries it. And Tech desperately needed that one. Yeah, they played with pace that time. They, their, their tempo was better. And again, they're doing a nice job. When Tennessee Tech gets open looks from the three-point line right now, they're doing a nice job of converting them. And that's Cowart's first made three-pointer this season. She was 0 for 1 the first five games of the year. As that jumper is well off from Wheeler, and Tech will take over with 4.4 ticks left in the half. Yeah, a mistake by Savannah Wheeler. Middle Tennessee had the opportunity to hold for the last shot, not give Tennessee a Tech even a look. She shot that too quick. She had an opportunity, I think, to throw that in the post, work around the post a little bit. Brock can't get the shot off in time at the buzzer. They they're, counted it. They're going to look at it again. but Edwin Center. And we are underway here in the third quarter. Education day, a packed house full of Rutherford County grade school kids getting the day off to come cheer on the Lady Raiders as Boldareva gets her own rebound off the miss. Great set to start the third quarter. It was a chance to get Boldareva on a quick seal for a score, just missed that easy shot with her left hand. Five on the shot clock, Courtney Woodson at the top of the key. Now Blakely's got to put it up. And that just got some glass, but Boldareva cleans up the mess. Blakely recognizing she had to get a shot up. Shot clock was running down. I'm not sure it hit the rim. Boldareva no. got it, though, probably before that horn would have went off and she was able to get the put back. Jordan Brock, the leading scorer for Texas Tech at the half, puts up another three. This one misses everything. 
Good effort trying to save it by Reagan Grimes, but it goes the other way. And again, that's Middle Tennessee's defense getting you out of rhythm. You could see Coach Roseman there saying, that's not our shot. That's not what we want. And she's right. That's not a shot in the flow of their offense. Their offense is about getting people open for open looks, not trying to create one-on-one -on -one with a dribble step back. And that would be the same thing if Malia Owens was in the lineup for Tennessee Tech as well, as this is a very balanced Eagles offense as we have a whistle on the rebound. And we're going the other way. It is. Don't They don't have one player that, that's going to get you 20 a night. They've got several players that can hover right around that double figure, uh, that double figure mark. But they only average just over 60 points a game, and they give up just about 60 points a game also. So again, if this game's in the 70s, it doesn't favor Tennessee Tech. And right now, it's on their way, Middle Tennessee on their way to, to that 70-point mark. Conversely, Rick Insel and Middle Tennessee, they can stop you defensively. And, and if they continue to put pressure on Tennessee Tech, this game could get out of hand quick. Hurst draws the foul on the drive against Savannah Wheeler. And Tech will go to the line for just the second time. As Alaska will check in for Boldereva. Reagan Hurst from Bloomington Springs, Tennessee, a product of Upperman High School. Knocks down the first free throw. And I'm not sure anybody can hear me say that. What did you say? No, I'm kidding, I did, I did hear you, but these kids, they love their home team, and there's a reason Middle Tennessee very successful on Education Day, but very successful anytime they take the court here in the Murphy Center under Rick Ensel. 209 wins, only 43 losses in the 18 years that Rick Ensel has been here with the Lady Raiders. That's just an outstanding winning percentage for a home court. Yeah, one of the best home court advantages in all of women's college basketball, not just Conference USA, but the entire country as Blakely gives it up for Gregory for three. Money! Steal off of a turnover to a transition three, a quick three like that. Those are in the men's game. I mean, that's something that just is demoralizing to the, to the opposing team, and it really gets the crowd fired up. First field goal this afternoon for Gregory as Reagan Hurst got loose in the paint and scores her first. That's the second time there's been dribble penetration on Middle Tennessee and the backside guard, that time it was Blakely, didn't get down in the rotation and it gave Tennessee Tech an easy score at the rim. Malashka, eight on the shot clock, driving left side, able to finish with the left hand. So smooth, so capable. When you're a five player, a post player, and you can sweep the ball from the perimeter and get to the rim like that. And Tennessee Tech, Kim Roseman did a nice job protecting Anna Walker. She only had two fouls the rest of that first half, but is gonna continue to attack her. Malashka leading all scores now with 10 as Reagan Grimes got a little kick off the spin, her second field goal. Tech down 13. Six points now for Reagan Grimes as Whitson will step into a three. And Malashka with the offensive board. And she's short. Did a nice job getting position to get that offensive rebound. And on that putback, just faded a little bit away from the rim. Foul going against Jalen Gregory as Gwynn was forcing her way through the lane. Third foul against Gregory. And the second team foul against Middle here in the third quarter. as Anna Walker will check out, get some coaching from Kim Roseman over on that tech sideline. And a whistle against Malashka, she raises her hand as the guilty party. And that's gonna bring Boldereva back into the basketball game. Malashka just a little bit out of position on the inbounds, and she'll take a seat with 10 points. Only player in double figures tonight for either squad. See how Blakely's on tied there to keep it on the baseline. Brock doing a lot of dribbling away from the bucket, now back towards it. 
Quinn in traffic, lost it. And a foul called against Middle. Going against Boldereva, her first. Yeah, the backside official made that call, but the two in the in the position to make it uh, didn't see it that way, but that's why you have three officials. So Gwynn misses the first free throw, the first missed free throw from either team tonight. It shot 19 of them. Gwynn misses both. And a lot of in-state talent here in this game tonight. Quinn, the free throw shooter, one of those Tennessee. These Tennessee kids know each other so well and have played together either in high school events or AEU on the summer circuit. As you saw right there, Boulder Raven with a nice high-low from Courtney Whitson. A lot of them played together on the same AAU teams as well. Brock another three this time from the corner on the rim. Boldarevo with another rebound. That's rebound number three. See Tennessee Tech continuing to try to stay high side on that wing entry, making that wing pass. You can't post feed from the wing. Did a nice job, Middle Tennessee, of reversing it back to the funnel. Boulder River probably needed to take a dribble and a drop step on that one, as that three is online, but short from Reagan Grimes. And now Blakely will run the show from half court. Boldereva, a little high-low action from the wing, draws the foul. And that'll take us to our first media timeout in the third quarter. Middle Tennessee maintains their double-digit lead. They're on top by 15 with 416 left to go here in the third. He's at the line to shoot two. Boldereva, eight points here this afternoon. Now make it nine for the sophomore from Moscow, Russia. Now the second Blue Raider in double figures along with Sidney Malashka who checks in for Boulder Raven. And now it's the largest lead for Middle Tennessee at 17. And that's gonna be a travel against Peyton Carter. One too many steps on the feed. Don't see that called very often anymore, but definitely one or two too many steps. Yeah, she took an extra step. It, it is a travel, and a lot of times officials just kind of let it go in the in the flow of, of the game. But again, that's Middle Tennessee's defense just speeding it up and forcing Tennessee Tech to throw that entry pass a little before she was ready to catch it. Eighth turnover against the Golden Eagles as there's 10 on the shot clock for Courtney Blakely. Now five on the drive. Going up with a left hand, and I'm not sure if Peyton Carter got a piece of that one. It went wide of the rim. That's twice now Blakely on her left hand drive. She's taking off to shoot it and she's outside the paint. Need to get her a little bit more of a direct line. Try to get her to, to dig and shorten that shot attempt. Kira Hill in trouble and Whitson will pick up the foul. And Courtney Whitson gives a smile to the referee and says, you sure? Yeah, Kira Hill fumbling for that loose ball and picked it up and just, just turned and shot it up and so often as a coach you you're, you get frustrated when you feel like it was a bailout on an attempt like that you want to kind of let the officials play through but when it's your kid shooting it you want that call tech has missed their last three free throws 
as Kira Hill, the junior from Trenton, Tennessee. Rimmed out the second, four straight missed free throws. And the scoring drought continues over three minutes now with Tennessee Tech unable to get off of 33. Wheeler, that shot is well off, but Kalashka there to clean it up and count the bucket. Yeah, Wheeler balanced there. She was a little off balance and, and didn't have her feet set when she shot that, but Boldareva doing a nice job cleaning up that offensive board. And again, she's so versatile. She can score with either hand, and I almost think at the rim, she prefers her left hand right there. She just puts nice English on that basketball, and Middle Tennessee just continues to pound the offensive boards now and the rebounding advantage slowly in the Blue Raiders' favor as well. You can see the frustration on Savannah Wheeler's face after that shot. Didn't look natural, it looked like she had forced it, but she looked over to the bench and both Rick and Matt Insel were looking at her, giving her the nod and clapping, saying, hey, keep shooting, keep shooting. As Tech keeps shooting, knocking down another three. This time it's Hurst. And Whitson's guarding Hurst, but what Whitson did on that drive, I talked about not getting that rotation right and taking away that interior pass. Whitson did, she dove down and took that away. Credit Tennessee Tech then, they know the next counter is to throw it outside for the three point shot. That's why, uh, that's, that's why Hurst was so wide open from three. Wheeler's gonna drive and gets it to the line. And a nice senior move from the senior Wheeler. Drive to the rack to get the foul called as the shot clock was winding down and she will head to the line. Yeah, and again, as we talked about, with each game, you're seeing, seeing her get more and more confident within this offense. It's no different than Dorsar last year that came in. It took her until almost mid-December conference play before she really felt comfortable and, and had a good grasp on this Middle Tennessee offense. And Wheeler stays perfect, eight for eight from the line tonight. As she is now in double figures along with Boldareva and Malashka. Middles lead now 19, their largest of the game. That mid-range jumper falls for Ainsley Hall, who's just checked in for her first action tonight. Looking to go back high, low to Malashka, and they'll at least draw the foul against Anna Walker, and that's going to be her third. And the fourth team foul against Tech. Yeah, Walker doing everything she can to push Malashka off the block and make those catches come up higher. Middle Tennessee running a nice little three-player motion right there with their corners, uh, shooters in the corner. It spaces the floor so well, and there's so many different things you can do out of it. And Malashko, a wide open lane to the hole. Easy bucket for Malashko. That just was a breakdown defensively, Tennessee Tech. Malashka now six of seven from the floor as Wheeler with the steal, but then blocked at the other end. Nice recovery by Reagan Hurst. Yeah, Hurst did a nice job making a play on that ball, and Wheeler just just kind of showed it a little bit too early up high, but. Alaska going to work on the block. A lot of contact, no call. As Gwynn comes the other way, one on three. And she's gonna take it to the hole, just off the rim. Middle Tennessee up by 19, trailed by one. At the end of the first quarter, had a 12-point halftime lead after the last second three from Jordan Brock was wiped off as Wheeler will put it up. In and out. And there's yeah, going to be foul on the rebound. Yeah, that's going to be on Walker. That's going to be her fourth is the height and length of Malashka was able to get her hands on that loose ball. And then as she was going to secure it, Walker kept battling for it. It's going to get called for that, that foul. So. Two quick fouls in the first, two quick fouls in the third now for Walker. And 
they're going to have to do a good job of trying to manage her minutes for the leading score for Tennessee Tech. Savannah Wheeler struggling from behind the arc this year. has made just five threes on 22 attempts. As you said, still trying to find where her offensive game fits into this Middle Tennessee offense. She's certainly doing a good job of getting to the line. Gets to the line, can score at the rim. The three-point shot will come. Yep. I think her balance is a little bit off. Uh, she's leaning, and, and a lot of those, she's pulling up off the bounce for those three-point shots. And when you do that, that's even more critical that you get your feet set the right way. I'm not sure how many people outside of college basketball or basketball in general realize how much of a mental game shooting is. Everything has to be perfect every time you shoot. Whether it looks perfect or not, but your form, your feet, your core have to be just right. Yeah, but on the mental side, that's like you said, that, that's everything. You know, if you think you're going to make it, half the time you could be messed up and you still make it. So confidence is such a, a such a big thing, and it so easily can shift back and forth in the flow of a game. That's why so often as a coach, I talk to my kids about trying to get get an easy something to the rim to start with, build your confidence, see the ball going in then make those tough shots. Blakely faked the pass and went up with it, kicked it off the back of the rim. Now here comes Hurst, spins, and a shot at the buzzer just off. And again, mark. yeah, two, two times these last two quarters, Middle Tennessee had a chance for the last shot. Murphy center, Middle Tennessee trying to extend their winning streak over the Golden Eagles of Tennessee Tech. And Darren, they're doing it by force feeding the post, and they are eating inside the paint. Yeah, and defensively doing a great job limiting Tennessee Tech to even just get shot attempts right now. Tennessee Tech only 10 shot attempts that third quarter. If they want any chance of trying to get back into this and claw back in and make it a game, we've said they've got to be patient offensively, but they've got to, they've got to try to ramp this up a little bit, uh, get some more shot attempts in this fourth quarter. Third foul against Malashka, the first against middle for the quarter. Tech has now missed five straight free throws as Reagan Grimes, Ravenwood High School, Nashville, Tennessee, just another State of Tennessee product. Ends the drought of the free throw strike for the Golden Eagles. And the shrills never, never get old until you're driving home and your head is throbbing. And Tech is 75% free throw shooting team really struggling here in this second half and it might have something to do with this crowd. Malashka now seven, excuse me, 19 points, seven of nine from the floor. The senior from Minsk, Belarus. The middle, just 10 three-point attempts tonight. This is a team that averages about 26 per game as that loose ball is gonna be a tie-up as DJ McFarlane has checked in for her first run tonight for the Eagles. And she will check out. Yeah, McFarland just trying to trying to give the regulars a, a couple minutes of a break here between quarters, give them a chance to, to rest a little bit again with Walker having four fouls that adjust the rotations inside. And Tamia Scott taking a shot to make a shot. Her first bucket tonight. Freshman from Clarksville. Seen her minutes increase over the last few ball games. And now here comes Jalen Gregory. And Brock with the swipe will pick up the foul. Yeah, a little little push in the back too as, as that was happening there. And I don't think I don't think Jalen Gregory appreciated that. Not too much. And I think the officials might take a look yeah. at it. She definitely was making a play for the ball, but that second hand was in her back and yeah. kind of shoved Gregory down. And at the same time, but Gregory will be at the line shooting free throws. Yeah, there was no doubt she was making a play on the basketball, but the problem for Brock, she had her other hand in Jalen Gregory's back, and she kind of, as she reached, extended that hand a little bit, and we saw it from our angle right away, and, and I felt like there was enough there to make that call. And Again, credit these officials. They went and took a look at it, and indeed, uh, they assess it as a flagrant foul. So Middle Tennessee, two free throws for Gregory, and they'll retain possession here. 
And Gregory stays perfect from the charity stripe this season. Middle on a 6-0 run over the last minute. Sixty-five, thirty-nine lead, eight and a half to go here in the fourth quarter. Wheeler, a little one-two step in the lane, and that'll roll home. Nice job by Middle Tennessee again, running that three-player motion, and then as the shot clock ran down, they went to their short clock set of just a high ball screen and Savannah Wheeler a, a kid that can make a play and create a shot for herself nice job and Whitson will be called for the foul couldn't quite get around the body and she will pick up the third personal foul on the night and the second team foul against middle here in the fourth Grimes did a nice job she turned and posted right away when when you definitively turn and post hard right away a lot of times it just it takes a second for that defense to recover and Courtney Whitson late trying to get to her positioning defensively and an offensive foul going against Reagan Hurst that's gonna be her third got into a little bit of trouble after she picked up her dribble just lowered her shoulder you're taught as a player if you're if your player picks up the ball, that's a dead ball, and you take up that space right away, and Tennessee Tech, that player, she raised the ball above her head. It gives you even a chance to close up that space even more. Middle Tennessee perimeter defense once again paying dividends for them in this basketball game. Gregory lines up to three. This one is off the rim. Foul going against middle. Gregory just one of five from the floor here this afternoon as the foul will go against Malashka that's going to be four against Cassinia so she will take a seat Boldareva can come in and fill that spot she only has one foul so far on the day and again just the luxury of having two post players with that kind of size makes a difference here for the Lady Raiders Whitson picks off the errant pass from Gwen and finds Scott who finishes at the other end, her second bucket. You see the upside for Tamia Scott right there on that play as she gathered the ball and was able to just kind of elevate and float there at the rim. She's going to have a nice future here as a Lady Raider. Nice drive and kick, but the three won't go in the corner for Reagan Grimes as Scott can't handle the lob pass from Wheeler. I think Wheeler, if she had that to do over again, she'd have maybe, the pull-up was probably there. She looked like she was going to give it to Scott earlier in that possession. That wasn't the right decision, so she hung on to it maybe one dribble too long, and she probably had the pull-up. Tennessee Tech now just one shot and done. They're not trying to get offensive reboard, uh, rebounds. They're not crashing the boards. and Just 12 total second-half points for the Golden Eagles here this afternoon. But they do force a turnover here. Gwynn's going to be fouled on the drive. Going against Savannah Wheeler. Third against Wheeler. As Courtney Blakely comes back into the ball game. Middle now with a 30-point advantage against Tennessee Tech. And the last, well, really during the Rick Insel era, Middle Tennessee has pretty much dominated this rivalry series against Tennessee Tech. The only loss coming a few years back against Kim Roseman's squad. But Middle has won 15 of 16 as that ball will stay at this end. But as we talked about at the top of this broadcast, this rivalry goes back before even women's basketball was a sanctioned NCAA event. They've played over 105 times, I believe. And it's a very even series. It does, and I'm glad that they're continuing it. Credit to Kim Roseman for continuing to schedule these home and homes and play in Rick Insel because there's not a lot of teams here in the state of Tennessee that will play Middle Tennessee. Vanderbilt, 
has stopped their series with the Lady Raiders right now. And of course, the Lady Vols, they stopped that series a long time ago. And I wish that had come back. It'd be great to see two of the premier programs in the state of Tennessee uh, play each other again, so. And we really don't see it in the men's game as much either. Everything has to be, unless it's, you know, the ACC Big Ten Challenge or something like that, we don't see a lot of home and home series between Power Five teams or group be some sort of some sort of special event. It's it's kind of become a problem, in my opinion, in terms of how a lot of conference games they just oh, we'll in a holiday tournament. They schedule wins is what they do. Exactly. You know they've got the money to do that, and so you see so many of these teams that are Power Five teams that don't want to play anybody that could maybe compete with them in the non-conference. I get it, they want to schedule wins, but the problem then is when they get into close games in conference, they haven't been battle tested. And so year in and year out, the teams that go to find a little Justin Bieber, old school Justin Bieber. And an offensive foul, I believe going against Middle Tennessee, Bull Dereva getting a little too physical down low. Yeah, I didn't see that, but the Middle Tennessee bench immediately looked at Boulder Raven and said, you don't have to do that. So obviously they agreed with that call. 15 foul against Middle. Five and a half to go here in the fourth quarter. And Darren, you and I were talking about non-conference scheduling and how that prepares your team for conference play and for March, and you alluded to how Rick Ensel always tries to front load that non-conference schedule and already played teams what, like nine teams or six of nine that were in postseason last year either the WNIT or the NCAA tournament and this is one right here this Tennessee Tech squad made it to the second round of the WNIT yeah coach Ensel has never shied away from con uh, playing those tough teams his first couple years he had Maryland off of their defending national championship season come in here to the Murphy Center He's had Tennessee, he's had Kentucky here on multiple occasions, so. Virginia. Yeah. Virginia, yeah, yeah, so. Coach Ensel will play anybody, anytime, and again, that's where I wish there were more coaches that, at those bigger schools that, that continue. You wanna grow the game of basketball, and everyone talks about women's basketball and how you can grow the game. You grow the game of women's basketball by playing those types of games in the non-conference. Foul on the rebound after a couple of missed threes from Wheeler, still trying to find that stroke. Middle just three of 14 from behind the arc tonight. Haven't really needed the long ball as they have been feasting in the paint and at the charity stripe. Yeah, they connect on a third of those and, and this, this game gets close to a, I mean, a hundred point opportunity for Middle Tennessee, but they've just been so dominant inside, off the bounce to the rim and then the free throw line their, their size advantage inside really wearing down Tennessee Tech is, that'll be all for Anna Walker today as she gets her fifth foul as, as she battling with Boldareva inside. Four points for Walker, two of nine from the floor. Did have five rebounds, got those five fouls. Down the shot clock for middle. Wheeler will go back to the charity stripe. I like that drive by Savannah Wheeler. Kira Hill for Tennessee Tech was, was so wrapped up in defending Bull the Raven, trying to keep her from getting prime position that she wasn't in a position to help. Wheeler noticed that and was able to put it on the bounce and get to the rim and, and Hill came over and reacted too late and Wheeler gets two more foul shots. And Wheeler sinks them both as Middle Tennessee is 26 of 26 from the stripe. I, I waited to give that stat until after the free throws from Savannah Wheeler. So you're welcome to whoever I'm thinking. As that three is off the mark as Boulder Rava takes a tumble as she tripped over Kira Hill 
Yeah, that should be a foul on Tennessee Tech there. As Boulder Raven was in position to get that loose ball rebound and she fell over the Tech player that was on the ground. I think that was Hill, but I know Coach Roseman doesn't like it, but that's, that's a foul. So now Boulder Raven will head to the free throw strike. 10 points tonight, well, along with five rebounds. Don't look at me. Hey, 26 out of 28 ain't bad. Meatloaf could write a song about that. <laughs> oh, and a nice pick by Courtney Blakely, and she'll finish smooth with the left hand. Yeah, and there, Courtney Blakely, she's had a couple hit hard off the backboard with the left hand today. You saw as she approached that shot, she slowed down, gathered herself, and was able to lay that softly, that ball softly off the glass there. That's a good adjustment by Blakely. Yeah, almost looked like she took one extra dribble just to get a little bit closer to that block. As Tennessee Tech will go to the line, and Kira Hill will shoot two. Yeah, so often players, they, they want to extend and be Julius Irving, Michael Jordan, Brianna Stewart, and, and just glide through the air like that. Well, we're not built the same way. So, you know, take that extra dribble, what's jump this, up this more than jump out. I've seen you, I've seen your game. You need to take an extra dribble and probably <laughs> make a pass. To think that I was even attacking the rim is hilarious. As Hill can't get the kick off the rim. I know your game was above the rim, so I, I know you speak from experience. I spent a lot of time on that bench. <laughs> if I even made the team, that was a struggle sometimes. Jada Granham has checked in for her first run tonight for middle. It's three and a half minutes in this one as middle will inch closer to pick up their fourth win on the season before they welcome the Louisville Cardinals to the glass house on Sunday. Yeah, again, I'm excited for that opportunity for Middle Tennessee. Louisville played well last night up at Ohio State. Coach Kevin McGuff came from behind and ended up, you know, pulling that victory out. But those, that was a good basketball game last night. And get your tickets, Middle Tennessee, if you haven't already, because Rumor has it there's a big crowd. They're expecting close to 9,000 people here in the Murphy Center, and it's going to be loud. It's going to be fun. That mid-range jumper will drop for Jennifer Sullivan, another Tennessee product out of Bearden High School in Knoxville, Tennessee. Tennessee Tech's got 44 points, and they had 19 in the first quarter. So put that into perspective with the defense that Middle Tennessee's been able to play today. Yeah, just 15 second half points as that's going to be a jump ball. And Tech will take over with turns it over. Right idea there on that baseline cut by Sullivan. Just wasn't aware of where she was on the court and was out of bounds as you'll see some role players now getting some run here these last couple minutes. Courtney Whitson gets to come out to a nice ovation and high fives all the way around as Middle Tennessee did what they needed to do today. They came out, took care of business, Again, defending the, the Tennessee Tech very, very well. Wheeler on the drive with four on the shot clock. Got it to roll home. But then she comes up limping as she hits the deck, grabbing that left ankle. Yeah, we don't want to speculate. It almost looked like she cramped up and the trainer's rubbing her leg right there. So hopefully it's, that's, that's all it is. Is really nice move, Savannah Wheeler, again, attacking the rim and getting all the way and finishing there at the paint. 
training staff and Matt Ensel run over to help her up and sort of looks like a Charlie horse of some kind as she will get some help over behind the bench. This is already a yeah, Tennessee team that's banged up a little bit without Alexis Whittington. Foul on the drive as Kira Hill was muscling her way through the paint. Foul against Jada Granham, her first. Junior from Ontario, Canada. One of four international players on Rick Insel's squad this year. Jada Graham doesn't get a lot of time during her time here so far, but does a nice job in practice every day for Coach Insel and the Lady Raiders. And same with Lene Riley. Getting some valuable minutes here in the last minute, 30 seconds of this basketball game. Lene Riley, the freshman from Akron, Ohio. I can think of a couple of good ball players came out of Akron. Uh, as the lefty flicks home the free throw. One and a half left in this one. Uh, as it looks like Savannah Wheeler is walking it off and heading back to Middle Tennessee's bench. That's a good sign. on the shot clock for Blakely. Scott with two on the shot clock, knocks down the three. Just her second three-pointer this season, came into this game one for four from behind the arc as she's put in a lot of minutes here tonight for Rick Edsel. Yeah, you see her upside and her ability to shoot the ball. She's long, can handle the basketball. She just is a freshman, and it takes time for a freshman to get used to the speed of this level of basketball. And more important, most of all, it's the defense, just just understanding how you've got to defend at the next level to, to, be, to be a really good basketball player. Blakely guarded by Sullivan, the reigning for a Miss Basketball winner as Jalen Gregory knocks down a three. Good drive by Blakely and, and just that help in the corner. And that's why Middle puts those shooters in the corner like that. The minute you help off, they've got kids that can catch and shoot, knock that down, and Gregory did. And Middle Tennessee extends their home court winning streak and their winning streak against the Golden Eagles with an 83-45 win over visiting Tennessee Tech and Darren a great